Join us on Yorkshire next Saturday at five past eight for Goldie Horn in Wildcats. Is it a plague of Bruce Forsyth's? Nice to see you, to see you. Yes! A spaghetti western? Nope. Beatles Hot Shots, Sunday at 8.30 on Yorkshire. What you see was my father's before me and his father's before him. And someday, son, all this will be yours. Thanks, Dad. Castle Mine is made with golden cluster hops. Ingenious inheritors wouldn't give a Castle Mine Forex for any other lager. Forbidden Fragrance from Parfum Cacherel. Che bella! Sono già innamorato. <laughs> che bella! Sono già innamorato. E <laughs> compra un mazzo di fiori. Eh. <laughs> Martini. In Italy, some things never change. Not the same Yorkshire. See all here, all and say not. Yeah, and eat all, drink all, and pay not. Wise words in heartbeat. Sunday, 7.30 on Yorkshire. Tonight, Clint Eastwood in the Deadpool. Maybe I'll start my own Deadpool and put you on it. Paul Newman in Cool Hand Luke. You'll never make it. What are you talking? What we got here is a failure to communicate. The tough guys are here later tonight. Now on Yorkshire, we join ITN in London for the latest news and sport with Carol Barnes. Good evening, the news and sport from ITN. Tonight's headlines. Russia threatens to bomb Chechnya as the deadline expires. Shots are fired at the White House. Secret Service hunt the gunman. And the Saturday night sports headline, Forrest Stan Collymore scores at Old Trafford. United's record is over. President Yeltsin's deadline for Chechnya to lay down its weapons has just passed. If the country continues to defy the ultimatum, the Russians have threatened to launch missile attacks and bomb the Chechen capital, Grozny. But tonight, an unconfirmed report says the Chechen leader, General Dudayev, has told Moscow he's ready for peace talks. Foreign journalists have been advised to leave Grozny, but ITN's Julian Mannion is one of the few to remain. The Chechens are still erecting flimsy barricades at the entrances to Grozny. Their militia troops are standing by for combat with an enemy that outnumbers them, outguns them, and has complete command of the air. At the front line, where the Russian tanks are visible, there is little sign that they are preparing for an all-out assault. In fact, their troops appear to be digging in. It now appears that Moscow's strategy will be to expand the previous air campaign against Chechnya by bombing what are described as strategic targets in the capital. The threat to use air power suggests that the Russians are still reluctant to commit their ground troops to street fighting against the Chechens. 
Meanwhile, the majority of foreign journalists working in Grozny have left the city. The European Broadcasting Union, whose satellite dish has been transmitting pictures of the crisis to the outside world, has come under fierce Russian pressure to leave. There's even been a Russian attempt to jam the satellite transmissions. In the end, the threat of Russian airstrikes finally persuaded the EBU to close the satellite television operation in the Chechen capital. When this satellite dish is dismantled, the people of Grozny will be facing the might of Russia's army and air force without the world as witness. For both General Dudayev and Boris Yeltsin, the stakes are now so high that it may be very difficult to avoid further bloodshed. Julian Mannion, ITN, Grozny. This is the meeting which decided on what Russia says is the last warning to Chechenia. Deputy Prime Minister Nikolai Yagorov on the right is reported as saying Grozny will face missile and bombing attacks if tonight's deadline isn't met. The Security Council, chaired by President Yeltsin, who's said to be still recovering from minor surgery, appointed Yagorov and his counterintelligence chief to fly out for talks with General Dadaev to negotiate on disarming his forces. Throughout the day, Moscow has been issuing increasingly tougher warnings. There might be clashes, there might be provocations. Russian authorities are suggesting that all the civilians, women, children and old people who are not armed should leave now. It's now increasingly likely that Russia's forces will tighten their grip on the Chechen capital in a siege and then mount strategic attacks. Andrew Simmons, ITN, Moscow. A gunman has opened fire on the White House in Washington, hitting a balcony below President Clinton's living quarters. No one was hurt and Mr Clinton and his family slept through the shooting. But it's the third major security scare at the White House since September. At the back of the White House at first light, dozens of police officers comb the grounds for any clue as to who fired the shots, how many and why. Detectives believe the shots came from a small handgun. Mr. Clinton was awakened by aides later and told about the incident. Mr. Mr. President, President, did you hear the gunshots, sir? Do you feel safe? The Secret Service says he was never in any danger. This may not have been a very direct or a very serious attempt on the president's life, but it is the third such attack in as many months. That's unprecedented and a grave worry for the president's security service. Six weeks ago, a man fired 29 shots through the fence at the other side of the White House. He's been charged with attempted assassination. Weeks before that, a man was killed when he crashed his small plane into the White House. This incident guarantees that security around the president will now be tightened still further. Bill Neely, ITN, Washington. The News of the World says it will name the winner of last week's £18 million national lottery jackpot in tomorrow's newspaper. The lottery organiser Camelot has issued a statement expressing its disappointment. The editor of the News of the World, Piers Morgan, says if you pay a pound for a lottery ticket, then you're entitled to know who wins the jackpot. And in tonight's draw, the lottery organisers Camelot are still waiting to hear if anyone has hit the jackpot, this time of £7.2 million. The winning numbers are 3, 5, 9, 13, 14 and 38. The bonus number is 30. Just under 50 million tickets were sold for tonight's draw. Two men who hired a hit woman to murder a former business colleague were jailed for life today. Deeth Bridges and Paul Tubbs were convicted at the Old Bailey of plotting to kill roofing contractor Graham Woodhatch. He was shot dead by a New Zealand woman known as Sparky. She'll be sentenced next week. The first newspaper interview with the Murs murderer, Myra, Murs murderer, murderer forgive me, Myra Hindley, will be published tomorrow. It was carried out in Cookhamwood Prison in Kent before Hindley learned she'll spend the rest of her life in jail. It's thought the Sunday Times got the interview without the knowledge of the prison authorities. This was the first face-to-face -face interview with Myra Hindley, a Sunday Times journalist spending an hour with her in her cell. It provides an insight into a woman who's still among the most hated in Britain. One comes away with the impression of a woman who is very much beaten down by the 30 years that she spent in prison, very much wanting to tell you that she recognises the, the horrendous nature of her crimes, but one who will not give up trying to get free, trying to get parole. When she was talking about the things that she cares about most passionately, 
she does tend to look very intensely into the person she's talking to's eyes. And that was very disconcerting at times. The interview is seen by some as an attempt by Hindley to attract sympathy. She may have been told she'll never be released, but her campaign for freedom is to continue. Catholics and Protestants came together tonight to mark three and a half months of peace in Northern Ireland with a joint carol service. They prayed for peace on earth over Christmas and into the new year. They came from all sides, from north and south, Protestant and Catholic, all devoted to peace. Led by the Warrington Male Voice Choir, with the parents of young bomb victim Tim Parry and the congregation, this was a time for reconciliation. Tonight, we celebrate Christmas together. We celebrate the first Christmas after the peace agreement. And we hope and pray that we'll be able to build on this and find a permanent peace in Ireland. Terry Lloyd, ITN, Belfast. Now, today's sports news, and with the details, here's Graham Miller. Manchester United's perfect home record in the Premiership was shattered by Nottingham Forest and the player they reportedly want to buy. Stan Collymore is the man, and his 35th minute strike was the first goal United had conceded at home since Easter. After Stuart Pearce added a second, Eric Cantona set up a tense finish, but it wasn't enough. Kenny Dalglish's leaders were denied their eighth league win in a row by Leicester under new manager Mark McGee. And Andy Cole fluffed a penalty at Coventry, so Newcastle also missed the chance to cash in on United's defeat. Whilst Tony Cotty recorded his first West Ham hat-trick for eight years at Upton Park. So Blackburn, despite that goalless draw, extend their lead to two points over United. Forrest climbed to fourth after that win at Old Trafford. In the first division, Tranmere missed the chance to go...